Now, nature versus nurture goes out the window with this case, as this woman is pure evil. Satan Spawn, who goes by the name of Carla Hamolka, is a serial killer who was bizarrely led out of prison. Carla Hamolka is a Canadian serial killer who acted as an accomplice to her husband, Paul Bernardo, taking an active part in the rapes and murders of at least three minors in Ontario, including her own sister, Tammy Hamolka, between 1990 and 1992. I've been fortunate enough to have some great guests on the podcast as it relates to crime, including Gil Carrillo, who was on the Richard Ramirez Night Stalker case, Jillian Lauren, who's an investigative journalist and um, New York Times best-selling author. She extensively interviewed Samuel Little, who of course is now known as the USA's most prolific serial killer, as well as Christopher Berry D, who is also an investigative criminologist and the world's number one true crime author, who has interviewed over 30 serial killers, including Kenneth Bianchi, the Hillside Strangler, as well as Joanne Dennehy, who is probably Britain's most vicious female serial killer. But there is just something about this case, the Ken and Barbie killers, which was um, Carla Malka and her husband Paul Bernardo. Now Paul Bernardo is of course in prison serving a life sentence and rightfully so, he's a piece of shit. But um, Carla Malka is free. She only served 12 years due to a very, very, very controversial plea deal, which was dubbed by the media as a deal with the devil, with Ontario prosecutors. Amalka stated to investigators that she had been an unwilling accomplice in Bernardo's murders as a result of domestic violence, and this resulted in the deal being made for a reduced prison sentence in exchange for a guilty plea to the charge of manslaughter. And after watching a few of these documentaries on the case, you kind of notice that they were one of these couples that used to videotape everything. And they actually videotaped their crimes as well. And the videotapes of these crimes actually surfaced after the plea bargain and before Bernardo's trial, proving that Hamalka was a more than active participant than she had originally claimed, including the rape and death of her own sister, Tammy Hamalka. Now these tapes only surfaced at the time which it did because Paul Bernardo's then lawyer, Ken Murray, he was actually pretty much sitting on the tapes. Now immediately after hearing about this and you know delving into this case, you kind of think that he should be sent to prison as well or be disbarred for obstruction of justice. And he actually did go to court and was found not guilty of obstruction of justice. Alan Young, an associate professor at Osgoode Hall Law School in Toronto, says there are strict rules for protecting the confidentiality of whatever a lawyer and his client discuss. If, for example, a client tells his lawyer that he is guilty, the lawyer is obliged to keep the information to himself. On the other hand, lawyers also have the responsibility to hand over any pertinent evidence or physical evidence such as a murder weapon or in this case videotapes to the court. Now, in Ken Murray's case, a lot of it depends on what his intent was in withholding the tapes. Whether it was to hide evidence that would damage his client or to hang on to evidence that he could use in his client's defense, in this case to counter Hamalka's testimony against Bernardo. Alan Young also went on to say that Murray may have breached an ethical obligation and his act did obstruct a police investigation, but that's still not enough to prove that this is a criminal offense. I didn't think it would go quite this far. Now, as can be expected, there was a massive public outcry, and I think there was a petition with over 300,000 signatures for Hamolka to be sent back to prison after serving only 12 years. Keep her in jail. Their outrage is shared by thousands, more than 300,000. That's how many signatures organizers say they have. The public must demand some rules for immunity deals in the future. It was a travesty of justice to give Carla Hamalka 12 years. Prosecutors have stated that they had to basically do the plea deal because they didn't have a case against Bernardo. But there are also a lot of people that argue that, you know, Hamalka wasn't being truthful during the plea deal. 
So the whole plea deal should basically be be voided. Paul would be left on me. You know, if you if you say or do anything to make them think that we're not happy, you know, I'm gonna kill you, you're gonna get it. The plea deal also stated that as long as Hamolka wasn't directly involved, meaning that she didn't cause the victim to stop breathing, resulting in death. If she wasn't directly involved with that, then the plea deal would stand. And of course, there was evidence that her own sister, Tammy Hamalka, died because of a, um, a rag which had halothane, which is an aesthetic agent, which Hamalka stole from the veterinary clinic where she worked. This was basically placed over her sister's mouth and to such an extent that there was a massive chemical burn on Tammy Hamalka's face. This was later concluded that, you know, this was the reason of her death when her body was exhumed. And yet this, along with the video evidence, wasn't enough to void the plea deal. There was no, nothing material that was going to change what happened with Hamalka as the result of uh, the exhumation of Tammy's body. Now, with regards to the other victims, in the early morning hours of June 15th, 1991, Paul Bernardo abducted 14-year-old Leslie Mahaffey in Burlington, Ontario, where then Bernardo and Hamalka subsequently videotaped themselves torturing and sexually abusing Mahaffey. Hamalka and Bernardo decided that the best way to get rid of Leslie Mahaffey's body would be to dismember the body and encase each body part in concrete. Bernardo went on to use his grandfather's circular saw to dismember Mahaffey. And both Bernardo and Hamolka then made a number of trips to dump the cement blocks in Lake Gibson. Ironically, these blocks containing Mahaffey's body were found by fishermen on the day Hamolka and Bernardo got married. During the after-school hours of April 16, 1992, Amolka and Bernardo kidnapped 15-year-old Christian French in a parking lot nearby Grace Lutheran Church in St. Catharines. And over Easter weekend, Amolka and Bernardo videotaped themselves torturing, raping and sodomizing French while forcing her to drink large amounts of alcohol and to submit to Bernardo. During the trial, Bernardo stated that Hamolka beat French with a rubber mallet as she was trying to escape and that she was subsequently strangled by a noose which was tied to her hope chest. French's nude body was discovered on April 30th, 1992 in a ditch in Burlington about 45 minutes from St. Catharines and a short distance from the cemetery where Mahaffey is buried. French's body had been washed and her hair had been cut off and Hamalka actually testified in court that the reason for cutting off her hair was to impede the identification of her body. On June 7th of 1991, there have also been accounts that Hamalka invited a 15 year old girl she had befriended at a pet shop two years earlier known as Jane Doe to their home, where she was drugged and videotaped being sexually assaulted by both Hamalka and Bernardo. Three years after Hamalka was sentenced for 12 years, Judge Galligan had the following to say with regards to whether the plea deal was fair or not. I frankly would have done it exactly the way the Crowns did it in this case. I respect the view of those who say it could have been and should have been done in a different way, but I just happen to disagree with them. Judge Galligan also stated that they couldn't renege on the deal because then they would lose all future credibility with anyone they would need to be a cooperating witness. And his statements pissed a lot of people off and it's just bizarre. And uh, law professor Alan Young summed it up perfectly. What about the concept of justice? You swear a goddamn oath to uphold justice in the constitution and all this, and you're worried about these ramifications for other people and the institution of plea bargaining. I don't know, it was disappointing. While Hamaka was in prison, she graduated with a bachelor's degree in psychology from Queens. And it was also reported that while being in prison, she had a sexual relationship with another convicted murderer. After serving 12 years for the crimes which she committed, she was released from prison on July 4th, 2005. And there have been reports that she lived in Guadalupe, but that she currently lives somewhere in Quebec. She married her lawyer's brother, Terry Bordelais, I think his name is, and together they've had three children. 
And it's also been reported that she's been allowed to supervise children on school field trips. Tamolka occasionally volunteers at the school. Several sources connected with the school say that on March 22nd, Tamolka helped supervise a group of kindergarten students during a field trip to the Montreal Science Center. Now, in conclusion, her husband at the time of the crimes, Paul Bernardo, you know, received a life sentence. He's in prison where he should be. But, you know, there's been a lot of controversy with how Carla Hermolka's side of the trial was handled with the whole plea bargain. She received 12 years. I mean, she was involved in the murder of her own sister, for goodness sakes. So there's been a lot of controversy with regards to this. In my humble opinion, I think the justice system fucked up royally with regards to this case. And also just the way that her sentence was rationed. Um, you know, she got five years for Leslie Mahaffey, five years for Kristen French, and two years for her own sister. So a lot of these things, a lot of a lot of what happened in this trial and with regards to sentencing just doesn't just doesn't make any sense. Now to really put things into perspective, American serial killer Charles Manson never physically killed anyone, but he had a major influence in the killings of these victims because he had this huge cult following and he basically ordered these killings to happen and he was sentenced to life in prison now charles manson's american carlo malka is canadian and during the plea deal with carlo malka one of the requirements as i understand it was that she had to be truthful now of course when the videotapes came out it pretty much showed that she was not truthful you know she wasn't the battered housewife who was forced to partake in these crimes as she claimed to be and the tape showed that she was a very very willing participant if not the mastermind behind these killings and it's baffling that this wasn't enough for this plea agreement to be thrown out and instead as was previously stated, she's been allowed to go on school field trips where she was supervising children. And the statements made by Judge Galligan where he said that they didn't want to renege on the plea deal because they could lose future credibility with cooperative witnesses basically means that their credibility means more than the potential lives at risk by letting Carla Homolka, who is a serial killer, out into society. Subsequent to the deal being made, one of the conditions was that Carla Homoka make full disclosure and be honest. But when we viewed the videotapes, we then saw that uh, she had raped uh, John, uh, Jane Doe, her and, and Paul Bernardo. She claimed that this was part of post-traumatic stress disorder due to uh, battered wife syndrome and that she had amnesia. At that point in time, we believe that, uh, and still believe strongly, that that was the opportunity to uh, go back on the plea resolution because she had breached it, as well as charge for Jane Doe.